What's going on, good people? You know what it is. It's your boy M. I. Corleone, here with some music industry advice. And uh, I just want to let you guys know you can log on to my website at beatsbytheKilo.com. There you'll find exclusive beats that ain't on my beat stars, they ain't on my SoundCloud. Do you mean I, um, what else? I got a, another album dropping April 1st. Um, my last, I'm talking about instrumental albums. My last instrumental album dropped February 22nd. And I'm just dropping back to back. I got distribution through Repost through SoundCloud. It's a company um, that SoundCloud owns. And um, that's the company that I'm rocking with right now. Um, I have been since the beginning of um, my production career. Now, those that know about me, I don't think they know as far back as I go in this rap stuff, so I'm going to tell you. I started rapping when I was 11 years old, um, and right away, I, I was a different type of rapper. Um, I wanted to get on, on wax right away. I wasn't shy about it. I wasn't... None of that. I was, it was, and we're talking 1996. We're talking about like the era of um, the Locks first first album. But I'm young. But my sister is eight years older, and pretty much my house was the was the house party because my dad would be. You know I mean at the bar, you know, and um, so my house turned into the house party. She'd be babysitting me or whatever, and you know how that is in the hood when somebody's babysitting. If you know what I mean, I come from from Philly, South Philly, Grace Ferry section, 29th from Wharton, Hollywood and Wharton, um, H Dud to be exact. Um, what else, man? Um, oh, so all through my school years, I started trying to get my pen up, so I would black leave the schoolwork alone. I went to school and just wrote raps. They would put me in the back of every class or put me in the front so I make sure I don't beatbox. And, uh, not beatbox, um, I used to think of beats and just be banging on the desk and rapping. And, um, you know, just coming up with stuff. And, um, uh, the teachers, you know, said I was a, a distraction. And um, they couldn't get me on nothing, so what they got me with is insubordination. And um, I hate that word still to this day. Um, so I remember I left my rap book and, um, in the cafeteria of C.W. Lewis High School in Blackwood, New Jersey. And um, I was over there because... Um, after my uncle got killed on 29th and Oakford, um, which is a block away from where back in the day, my mom witnessed that when she was 13, and she had my sister when she was 15. So, um, but anyway, um, to keep on track with the story, so my mom's side pretty much had got away from the neighborhood. Um, my uncle had a good job. He, um, was, was working with elevators and stuff like that. And uh, he wound up getting a spot and get my grandma and all out of there. My other aunt and uncle, um, by my uncle by marriage, excuse me. And I'm keeping this part, cause it's all wrong. I had a call job, but anyway, um, back to what I was saying. Um, so, the Jersey schools always found it a problem with me rapping. So one time, I was in seventh grade, Charles W. Lewis High School, Blackwood, New Jersey, middle school, I'm sorry, middle school. Seventh grade. We had a little team um, 
called PFL. This is when Puffy and them was out. This was 97. Mason and them was out. And it was all like player hating and all that. So we was PFL, players for life. And um, we, I formed that and I made it, you know, I made a name and all that. I was more into it than everybody else. So, you know, every day I would say like, yo, you write this to this. And tomorrow we, we bring it back to the, to the lunch table and see what's what. Um, my man Kashim, he just happened to uh, live over in Jersey too. Like I said, when my uncle got killed, my family migrated. On, I'm talking about my family on my mom's side. They didn't stay in, in uh, Philly and they were deeply rooted there. But when, you know, it was over some racism stuff. And that's why I'm, I grew up and my mom grew up. I mean, raised me not to be racist and, um, you know, to um, because she witnessed her brother get killed over something stupid, just like over a skin color. Like, somebody shot him with a, with a pump, Mossberg pump five times with the pellets. So imagine um, witnessing that when you're a 13 year old. And um, so, like I said, my mom had my sister when she was, actually, RIP my sister. Um, she had my sister seven days before um, she turned 16, so. But she was still 15 when she had my sister. But anyway, I'll say all that to say, that's why I was in Jersey with my mom, but I would come back to Philly all the time because my mom's boyfriend still lived in Philly, right, right in the hood, and uh, my pop still lived in Philly. So I'm there every weekend at my pop's. And like I said, my sister's there, and she's babysitting me, and my pop's is, you know what I mean, running around the bar and all that, doing this one-two thing. And I'm telling you, we used to have the craziest house parties. Like, it would be two kegs in the backyard with just... But it'd be crazy because I was so young and I was allowed in. Like, my friends would be jealous. Like, damn, like, I had like 12 year old friends because I'm like eight, 12, 13 year old friends and all that. And like, they're, they're hating on me because they're like, this little, well, he's allowed in, but I, you know what I mean? And, um, all the stuff that was going on in there, you know, you, they didn't want them kids to witness, but for some reason, um, it was my crib, so I was able to witness it. So, you know, um, what, what I witnessed was, you know, a lot of um, people in there just bagging up. Um, it turned into, in, into that situation, because this was an every weekend thing. Excuse me, this chair. But um, it turned into an every weekend thing. So the music was always playing. And back then, it was, um, you either had had the tape or you had, um, I'm talking about 93. 93 was one of my best summers ever. Like I was eight years old and, and it's crazy to even say that, but it just was like, um, because just being around that whole scene, like them playing the games, you know what I mean, the drinking games. Um, the, just, just, I was able to catch the 90s vibe, hip hop vibe, being so young. So like Dre, I remember the box was playing Dre and Easy. Back to back, it would be the real company, the real MF and G's. Easy E's this song, and then they play Dre Day and Snoop and them, and you know, um, actually I remember calling up the radio station so much and um, requesting Dre Day, cause that was my track to join up the Chronic, cause sometimes my sister would leave her tapes, um, but sometimes she'd take, them. 
because she would go out in the car or whatever. But sometimes she had to take me with her because she's babysitting. So I'd be in the car with her and her boyfriend, like, you know what I mean? Just riding around wherever. And, um, uh, 